Since its arrival in 1997, the Sennheiser HD600 has been lauded as a classic reference grade headphone. Now 23 years on, and from the same stable, there's a new contender for the crown in the £170 HD560S. But the kingdom has changed and young upstarts from China are threatening the reference headphone royalty from as little as £30. So what do they sound like? Do you get what you pay for? And most importantly, are they worth your hard earned cash? Well, no need to wait. You can hear what they sound like right now. Welcome to GI Chow. Once again, we've got the Sansa clip feeding the headphones via a FIO E11 amplifier. So starting with the HD600, going to use the left ear cup for each of the recordings.
So to try to summarise my take on things, the Civica Phoenix has the best sound overall but it's less convincing for comfort and value. It has issues with ears getting warm, for some it's headband and cup size, it's cosmetic appearance and it's cost for an unknown brand with a fairly low level of technology. If Massdrop released a version for say £130 with black painted wooden cups, deeper pads and an inline control they could be big sellers. The HD600 is still the daddy with its inimitable natural vocals, detailed but unfatiguing sound and comfort for long sessions. That's just so long as daddy has hung up his dance shoes or he has another pair. Its younger brother, the HD560S, is very competent so long as you're happy being tied to an amplifier. Unlike some, I don't find the HD560S too bright and happily there's no sibilance. However, the vocals are less warm and rich and natural than the HD600 which might draw attention to the treble. It does however have much better bass than the HD600, so in a nutshell this is the wider sounding HD600 with more even frequency response overall but slightly less engaging vocals. The value king however is the Superlux. This is really the wild card of the pack and some might have wondered what this imposter was doing in such a steam company. Raw these will kill you, but with a little know-how and bravery they get uncomfortably close in sound and comfort and convenience to these other headphones from a different league and at a fraction of the price. Now not wanting to philosophise too much, after all these videos are about the sound to allow you to judge yourself, but my feeling is that once beyond a certain minimal level of sound fidelity, the increase in the emotional impact of increased fidelity is questionable. A £30 headphone or earphone can make me dance or bring me to tears as much as a £300 one, or a £1,000 one for that matter. 
perhaps just like with cars, there's no perfect compromise. You can't simultaneously have the nimbleness and purity of a racing go-kart with the stately luxury of a Rolls-Royce, or the practicality and reliability of an SUV with the charisma and charm of an old British or Italian two-seater open-top sports car. To extend the analogy, maybe we should recognise its horses for courses and talk about our perfect two-car or three-car stable. Our practical workhorse superlux, our Sunday afternoon classic HD 600, our track day sporty Civic Phoenix. Now there's a fine line between audiophiles and what Rick Beto calls audio fools. Arguably, so long as we're getting something from the pursuit of our audio gear, whether we're enjoying familiar music, discovering new music, and developing our appreciation of the human qualities inextricably linked with music, or developing our abilities to debate and resolve fundamental truths about the tools we use to reproduce music, we remain the right side of that line. So there you go. What do you think? Let the world know in a comment below. So folks, I hope this helped. If it did, you can help others by liking or subscribing or commenting below. But for now, you all take care and I'll see you next time. Bye.